You've certainly noticed how when you create a node like area 2D, for example, you're going to have a warning sign next to it. This is the node configuration warning. It tells you what you need to do for the node to work properly. In this case, we'd have to add a collision shape 2D and then the collision shape 2D needs a collision resource and all the warning signs disappear. It turns out that you can do the same with your own nodes. So here, if I go to my game scene in the Metroidvania project, my level loader node has that configuration warning. It's missing a start level right now. If I add a scene like my level one in the level start slot, the configuration warning will disappear. To do so, to do the same thing, you want to create a node and add a script to it. So we're going to just create a quick script for the node 2D. Then you want that node, that script, to override a method called underscore get uh, configuration warning on the node class. This one is going to return a string. And if the string is empty, you get no warning. If there is something in that string, if you have a warning message, then you will get the pop-up dialog. But first, you need to use the tool mode for your script to run in the editor. This is common to any time you need a script to run inside the editor, you need the tool keyword at the top. Whether you are making an add-on, a tool to help you with level design or to preview the motion of your node in the editor, you need to add that keyword. Then you want to create that function, get configuration warning that is going to return a string. And all you want to do is use if else statements to return the warning if some condition is not met. So here's how I recommend to code it. I start with a warning variable that's going to be an empty string and I'm going to return it. So I'm going to use that warning variable and using if else statements, modify it to add my configuration warning. Imagine that this node needs a copy of a scene to work. So let's create a scene variable and it's going to be of type packed scene. Then in my configuration warning, I can check that if there is not a scene here, if this variable is empty, I'm going to change warning to something like um, the node is missing a scene, please add it from the inspector. Something like that. Not too important, but let me save the script as well. So the scene and the script, and you will see right now, my scene variable is empty and the configuration warning appears. If I put anything in my scene slot, after a few moments, the warning disappears. Now, what if you want to have several warnings? I have that on my level loader here. It can print two at the same time. Here's a quick tip to create several strings, to have several lines that work nicely. So we have the get configuration warning method here, and I'm creating a warnings pull string array. This is like an array, except it's only going to have strings inside of it and has a nice method called join. Join allows you to take all the entries in that pull string array and to place a character, a delimiter between them. In this case, a carriage return backlash n. So then I can have multiple conditional statements. For example, if it's missing the start level, the level loader might need that to load the level at the start of the game. I'm going to append a warning. It's missing a start level, consider setting one in the inspector. Also, it needs to know the path to the player node. So if you don't have that path set by the user, it's going to append another warning. And that way, the user of the level loader node, a game designer who might be working with me, will see that without having to look at the code, how level loader is supposed to work. So you can click on that and it will tell you what is missing, 
what you need to do. This allows you to document your nodes if they are not being properly used by your teammates or not the way you intended in a very transparent fashion. You can keep kind of the documentation inside your code. You don't have to have separate documents to tell them what to do. So I highly recommend that you start using that in your own projects. I'm making this short video as a test for videos with less editing as well working on the Metroidvania project. Please tell me in the comments if that is useful. If so, I can make these pretty quickly so I could make more content, more free content while we prepare the course. Thank you, Candy, for watching. Be creative, have fun. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.